Trying to make these flowers disappear? No, I'm trying to make those bees disappear. What bees? Those bees. <laughs> this powder is called forgetting dust. It's kind of a memory eraser. It makes you forget who you are for a while. What's that got to do with the bees? Well, when those bees come to the flowers for pollen, they'll be covered with forgetting dust. Then they'll forget that they're bees and won't sting anyone for a while. Look out! Mr. Conductor, I know their hive is. It's in a big tree out in the orchard, so why don't we just... Put some dust near the hive. Good thinking, Dan. I'll meet you in the orchard. Try to remember. Look at these. How are you? No, no. Who, who, who are you? Who am I? Where are we? I'm sorry, but I don't remember anything. Oh. Excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am? Is Wait. that my name? Is it ma'am? Oh, I, I don't really know. Um, can you tell me if the Rainbow Sun is on schedule? The Rainbow what? You know, the train. Well, this is a train station, isn't it? It is. Uh, listen, pal, the, uh, the train, uh, the express is running, uh, it's right on time. It'll be here in about uh, four minutes. Oh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. How did you know that? How did I know that? How did... I looked at the board, I looked at the clock, and then I... Oh. Hey, 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 hey. Huh? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Uh, my name is Ma'am. <laughs> now, let me get this straight. You don't know who you are, and you don't know who... I am? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what, what did you say your name was? <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> uh, they call me uh, Schemer. They call me Mr. Schemer. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Schemer. Oh, it's nice to meet you, ma'am. <laughs> well, if you, you run this station, that's very impressive. Well, uh, thank you. Yes, I do run it. It's, uh, it's a talent I have. And as I always say, if you have a talent, well, uh, you should run it. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you own this station, too? Uh, no, uh... But uh, considering that I do all of the important work, well, uh, I really should. Obviously. Yes, obviously. Ooh, that schemer makes me so mad. Uh, what's he up to now? Oh, Stacy's lost her memory, and instead of helping her, he's trying to take over the station. Yeah, that's really rotten. But look on the bright side, Dee Dee. Like what? Well, think how much trouble he's going to be in when Stacy gets her memory back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, thank you uh, for everything, uh, Mr. Schemer, but huh? I have to go because I have to try to find someone to help me. To whoa, 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 Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. I mean, ma'am. Uh -huh. Now, there's no reason rushing off and stressing your mind and trying to remember things. Well, why don't you just stay right here and enjoy not remembering? things and well i'll see if i can find someone that can help you oh. bye bye what a nice thoughtful man oh. aunt stacy uh who aunt stacy you know you oh i'm sorry but i think you've got the wrong person my name is ma'am uh oh did you smell this flower yes i remember doing that in fact that's the first thing I do remember. Oh, boy. You better sit down. Oh, well, tell me, do I know you? Of course you know me. I'm your nephew, Dan. Oh, well, hi. Nice to meet you, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hello, Stacy. Ah! Oh, little Dan! Aunt Stacy, come back. It's only Mr. Conductor. Ah! You don't have to.
to be afraid of me. My name is Mr. Conductor, and I've known you since you were Dan's age. I knew your parents when they were Dan's age. I live here in the signal house on that mural. Really? Truly? Oh, come on, Aunt Stacy. You've got to remember, Mr. Conductor. You two are friends. You take care of each other, like the time he caught a cold. Well, uh, tell me about it. Maybe it'll help me remember. Well, Mr. Conductor was sneezing and coughing. <laughs> oh, Mr. Conductor, you're not pretending to be sick like James. You're really getting a cold. I don't think you should be going anywhere, especially not to the South Pole. Ooh, it's so cold there, and look, you're hardly dressed for it. Please, don't worry about me. So you can take care of yourself like Little Sneezer? And who, may I ask, is Little Sneezer? Have you ever seen one of these? It's a pop-up book. When you open it, something unfolds in the middle. Ooh. Stacy, I have an idea. Why don't you tell the story and I'll supply the pictures? Well, that's a good idea, Mr. Conductor, but you'll have to listen very carefully because this is a story about catching a cold and what happened to Little Sneezer because he thought he could take care of himself. He was the toughest kid in these here parts. He was the master of all martial arts. His hands were fast, his feet were quick. There wasn't a kid he couldn't lick. He was one tough dude, but please take note. He refused to button his overcoat, or wear a hat when the wind blew cold, or put on galoshes when he was told. That's sissy stuff. It ain't for me. I wear what I want. I gotta be free. So off he trod into all sorts of weather. The front of his clothes rarely coming together. Stomping through puddles, he scared half the town. But there are some little dudes who he couldn't put down. They're smaller than ticks or flies or worms. They're mean, they're evil, they're nasty, they're germs. Just looking for kids with an unbuttoned coat to climb up their chest and jump down their throat. The more and more they come marching in with a slam to the head and a wham to the chin. They knocked him down, they laid him low, and soon he had no strength to go. The only running he was able to do was from his nose unto his shoes. They squeezed his neck, they clouded his head, and threw him back upon his bed. But how did he take it? I leave it to you. With nose of red and hands of blue, he went, mm-hmm. So what if I got a ruddy nose? I still ain't wearing all them clothes. I think it's time I told you about Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas is a tank engine who lives at a big station on the island of Sodor. He's a cheeky little engine with six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. little engine, too, always pulling coaches about, ready for the big engines to take on long journeys. And when trains come in, he pulls the empty coaches away so that the big engines can go and rest. Thomas thinks no engine works as hard as he does. He loves playing tricks on them, including Gordon, the biggest and proudest engine of all. Thomas likes to tease Gordon with his whistle. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? One day, after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran, laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> 